Okay, spiritual progress. What is it like to actually make spiritual progress? The vast majority of Catholics, I say this in all humility because I, I have been this type of Catholic and I'm vehemently trying only by the grace of God right now not to be, are digressing spiritually. They're slowly getting worse over time and becoming uh, more secular. They're breaking down like uranium as they're in the radiation of the secular world. The minority of Catholics, about the third that believe in the Eucharist, some of them are making spiritual progress. Some of them appear to be standing still in the spiritual world. But remember, there's no such thing as standing still in the spiritual world. You're either going forward or you're going backward. So they're more slowly moving backward in a less perceivable way. We want to be in the group of disciples that are actually going forward toward heaven, toward Jesus. Because if that isn't the case, then we're actually becoming more like the world and the flesh and the devil. Okay, so in this story, there's a lot going on here. Bartimaeus, this is funny, they say like son of Timaeus. Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. He's calling out to Jesus and he's using a messianic title, son of David, that you could only call the Messiah, the son of David. And so he's acknowledging his identity, saying, I believe you're the one every prophet wrote about and you will deliver us from all evil. How about delivering me from this blindness right now? I believe you can do it. And he just keeps calling out to him in faith. Now, here's the most interesting part of this for me, I think. And this is, oh man, if we can get this. This is a huge part of spiritual progress. The scriptures say when he hears that Jesus is actually calling him, he casts aside his cloak and springs up. That seems like minor detail to us modern readers and hearers, yeah? But a cloak in the ancient world, especially if you were a poor, blind beggar, that was the main thing you had. That was your coat, that was your tent, that was the main thing you used to keep you warm. It, your life in some ways revolved around the cloak to keep you from freezing to death. He hears Jesus calling him and he throws it off of him. Now, he's still blind. He's in a giant crowd of people. So what is throwing off this thing you use to comfort yourself in your current state really mean? It means that even before he gets his sight, even before Jesus heals him, he knows he's going to do it. He just knows he's going to do it. He makes it impossible for himself to go back to his old life, to go back to his way of living and processing. He actually does something proactive to make it impossible. Okay, this is important. Keep it in mind. Now, let me give you an example for us. This is a very, very common internal spiritual reality. Try to meditate on it from your perspective because this looks a little bit different for everybody. But say you experience some kind of pain in your life. Everybody experiences some kind of pain in your life. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know why it's there. You can't reverse engineer it to the origin point. You're just in pain, okay? And you know one thing about it, that when you're with somebody, when you're talking to somebody, you're hanging out with somebody at a party, you are in a work meeting, you're at coffee and donuts after mass, if it appears at some point they check out of the conversation, that pain greatly increases. That's the main stimulus, is you're talking about what you think is important about your life, and they're like, they're looking at their phone. 
Okay, you don't know why that is, but you just know that. Now, without consciously thinking, I feel devalued. I feel like someone has pulled off the impossible. They've actually objectively lessened my objective value. You don't think that, you just feel it. You feel rejected. Okay, so you don't think it, you feel it. It's pure experience, it's pain. It's a particular type of pain that you're very, very familiar with, but you can't see where it's coming from. You're blind to it. You sit in it in spiritual blindness. All you know is that it happens when someone checks out while you're talking to them. Okay, you with me? Now, you have felt this in the entirety of your life. You don't remember when it hit you first. It's just kind of always been there. But at some point, you figured out that you could do something about it. You figured out that if you entered the realm of fantasy, if you entered the realm of imagination, that place in our reason where we can conjure situations and people and scenarios, if you went into that place that you could make up internal stuff that was the exact opposite of the external stuff that was causing you pain, this pain of rejection, it's a medicine and your mind is the factory for it. And you can make as much of it as you want at any time. Every time you feel rejected, you medicate it with a fantasy of being loved and accepted and praised and told that you're superior in some way to the people who seem to devalue you. And over the years, it gets easier and easier. In fact, it becomes paradigmatic. It becomes integrated so deeply that it just becomes the way that you think. And in your adult life, maybe you find yourself in a confessional, confessing pride, vainglory, hateful, judgmental thoughts about other people, like these are weird things that just popped up out of nowhere. And you leave thinking that your next confession is probably going to be a lot like this one, but you don't know how to change it. That's the scenario. Okay, let's keep it simple. What's going on there? Obviously, you've been hurt in some way. The fall of man has affected you. Remember, the fall affects all of us, but you shatter a piece of glass, it's going to shatter unique every time. So we're uniquely shattered by the fall of man. That hurt makes a soft spot in your soul. And so it's easier to be affected negatively in that soft little spot. So when certain people do certain things, it pokes that spot. And you feel that pain more than maybe you would with other external stimuli. And you medicate it with something evil. You've learned to medicate it with something intrinsically evil that corresponds perfectly to the type of pain that you feel. You fantasize about being superior when someone has made you feel inferior. This is not an odd or a rare thing. In the kingdom of darkness, this is like oxygen. Everything I just described. What would happen if we Bartimaeus'd that situation? If we went about it just like he went about it? This is what I know would happen. We'd go into that confessional with real sorrow in our heart real knowledge of what's going on. They've exalted yourself in a way that even the Son of God incarnated did not exalt himself. But you make an actual firm resolution to not sin in that way again. An amendment of life, we call it. And you realize 
that the only way to do that is to figure out why you're sinning like that in the first place. That it's not random. It's not coming out of nowhere. So you decide, you choose to go on this interior journey to figure it out. And as you leave the confessional, still blind in that sin, you don't know where it's coming from, you make the decision to cast off the cloak of fantasy. To throw it away from yourself in a way that you can't get back to it. Or it would be extremely difficult to get back to it. And you call out to Jesus in faith, I can't do this. I just threw away the one thing that worked. You have to heal me. Now you have to heal me. See the movement of faith? And in response to seeing that, Jesus fills your heart with a knowledge so profound that it is impossible to communicate in words. He fills you with a heart knowledge. The heart knowledge is that you are so valuable to him that if you were the only person that existed, he would take every nail, every lash, every scourge, every punch just for you. The terrifying weight of that torture means less to him than you do. Not the idea of that in your mind, but the reality of that in your heart suddenly comes into reality. And you leave with the cloak of fantasy gone and you live in the power of that sight to be able to see yourself as you actually are. You live in that power. This is what we call spiritual progress.